Well, looking at this, I guess I was a little bit wrong. When we said we were going to find the measures of central tendency, we're actually also going to find the median and mode in this particular problem. So there you go. However, the mean will be the most important of the ones that we are going to find. Because this particular example has us finding all three of them. Right? So we're going to find the mean, median, and mode, actually, of a discrete frequency distribution. And I particularly love the game Scrabble. I used to play it with my grandparents all the time. Scrabble has a bunch of tiles, and in the corner of each tile is the point value for the game. So the question becomes, and you can see there's 100 tiles total because it's 10 tiles this way and 10 tiles this way. How many tiles have zero points, one point, two points, and so on. Now I've actually already counted, thankfully for you, the one points, because there's 68 of them. <laughs> and then there are seven two-point tiles, eight three-point tiles, 10 four-point tiles, and so on, right? So like the H's, for example, have four points. Now the question becomes, how many have zero points? It's not zero, it's two. These two squares in the corner. So the blank tiles have no point value, but they're really useful, especially if you have a cue in your hand and you need to get rid of it. Um, eight point tiles, well, there's two of those. There's the X right there. See how it's got an eight on it? And you spot the other one? It's the J right there. So there's two of those. And then everybody usually knows the, the most difficult places, or excuse me, the most difficult tiles to place, which are worth the most points which I already mentioned one, it's the Q and the Z, of course, or Z. All right, so there we have it. We This is a frequency distribution, right? So you have the number, um, your, what your tiles are worth, the number value of your tiles, and then you have the number of tiles that are at each of those values. So this is frequency, number of, right? All right, now what kind of distribution is this? The, when you look at point value, which are these numbers over here, well, they're obviously quantitative, otherwise you wouldn't have a game out of it. Qualitative wouldn't work for a game because you'd never know who's in the lead. So it has to be quantitative. And since they cannot take on decimal values, it's discrete. Right? Remember, discrete are the whole number ones. Right? So since they're whole numbers, then it has to be discrete. Continuous is the one where it could have decimals. Right, which is not taking place in this particular problem. All right, so now we want to find the mean, median, and mode point value. Now the mode is really easy to spot because remember the mode is the one with the highest frequency. So the mode is right here. Now it's not the 68. 68 is why it happens. One is the mode because one happens the most often. So a lot of students will say 68 and that's not true. It's one. One is the mode because it's the most frequent. Now the median, I imagine, is also one, but I can prove it. <laughs> and the mean, hmm, how about we use our calculator or we use StatCrunch to do this, all right? So we're gonna use technology. All right, so if you're gonna use technology, of course, this is going to be list one, and this is going to be list two, or if you like, in StatCrunch, you can place them um, in two columns, which is what I did. So if you look up MAT133 Scrabble, you will find the Scrabble tile values right here. So you can go to stat, summary stat. I'm not clicking on anything. I'm just letting my mouse hover. And then I move over to the right down to grouped bin data. And that's where I click to actually select that. My bins are the point value. Those are the X's. The counts are the frequencies, which is the number of tiles. And I'm gonna tell it I want it to find the mean the median. Let's see if it'll find the mode. I'm going to click on mode also just for fun and click compute. And there we have it. It did back me up. See, the mode is one, the median is one, and the mean is 1.87. Let me draw a graph of this just so you can get a sense of this. And it actually helps with the next question as well. Now, the trick is that we can't do a histogram, even though technically this should be a histogram. If we don't do the raw data list, it won't let me do a histogram. But I can do a bar graph, which looks a lot like a histogram. It's just the bars aren't touching. And this is not with data. I don't have a list that has, you know, two zeros and 68 ones. I didn't do that. So I have a summary. I have a table. So that's with summary. 
My categories are in the point value. My counts, my frequencies are in the number of tiles. It's a frequency distribution, sure. Let me just click. Actually, I'll put the value above the bar. I don't mind that. Click compute. And there it is. That's the frequency um, histogram, if you will, other than the bars should touch, which I cannot make them touch from a list. If you want to make a histogram where they actually touch, you'd actually have to retype the data. Zero, zero, and then 68 ones, and so on and so on and so on. I'm not going to do that, <laughs> but that's what you would it would take. Okay. All right, so you can see why the median's in one. What's happening is these high values over here, two through um, 10, are getting balanced out by the huge number of values in this one bar. So the middle value's in here somewhere. It was at half 50 of the tiles below it, 50 of the tiles above it, right? Remember what the median is, it's the middle value. So if I want 50 tiles below and 50 tiles above, then it's going to be the median, right? Because there were 68 ones. So if I take the first 50, I'm going to end up in here. And then the last 50, I'll end up in here, right? So the, the midway mark is right in there in the middle of that very tall bar. And the mean we saw is 1.87. Now, if you want it in the calculator, go to stat, edit. Remember, go up, press clear. Right? You have to clear out your data set that way. Up, press clear, enter. There are other ways to do it, but that's the easiest way. All right, I'm going to type these values. I'm going to pause, and I'll be right back. All right, so there's the list and the frequency list. So then stat, calculate, one variable, get your freak on, right? Have your frequency list be L2, which only takes place in two sections of the course. So frequency list is not a very common thing for us but it will be used in this particular section. So 3.3 three, and then actually 6.1 is the other one. So there's the median right there at one. There's the mean right there at the top at 1.87. The mode is not given to you in the calculator, but the mode is not exactly difficult to find. It's right there, okay? So the mode is there, the median is also there. Now, what is the shape of this distribution? Well, we saw a picture of it. I'm actually going to draw a little sketch. We had a little two, and then we have a really tall, right? So this was zero, this was one. There were two of them at zero. And then it went, what was it? Seven. So seven, eight, ten, one, zero, zero, two, zero, two. Now, that is actually, you know, more or less the distribution of this, right? Okay, so, I mean, it's not to scale or anything, but it's, you can tell what it is, and you don't have to draw a picture. You can visualize that by the numbers. So you have this really tall bar at, at one, right, 68 tall at one, and then it kind of tapers off to the right side. So you can tell it's skewed right just by looking at the table, looking at the frequencies right here. You can also tell it's skewed right when you draw a graph, but you can also tell it's skewed right because the mean is significantly larger than the median, at least for a game. So this is skewed right, no question about it. So you can see it from the graph. You have options. You can draw a graph. You can see from the table, right? For both of these values, there's a tall bar at 168. I'll just say tall bar at one, at one, right, which is 68 tall, and a tail going to the right, right, going off to 10. You can also see it because the mean, which is 1.87, is significantly larger than the median which was one. And we learned in section 3.1 that that was a way to tell that data sets are skewed. When your mean is pulled towards your tail, right? And if it's significantly larger, the mean gets nudged over to the right. right? It has to do with the mean being the balance point and all of that. Right? So I can write C table in section 3.1. We drew a little table, we had little pictures, said if it's skewed right, the mean will be bigger than the median, and so on. All right, now, you're playing Scrabble with a friend. I always like to think of it as a person that, you know, drops out of the sky and has never played Scrabble before, which usually is a few students. There's usually a few students that have never played Scrabble. 
So if they say to you, you know, what's the average point value for a tile in this game? What would you answer? Hmm. Well, I know what I would answer. <laughs> I would answer one. <laughs> okay. So, but the reason for your explanation can vary. So you can say one because um, the points, point value, point values are skewed right. So the median is a better average. Right? It's a very statistics-y answer. <laughs> I do this all the time, actually, in classes. Um, so the students want to know what the average test score was, and I invariably give them the median because test scores are skewed, and so the median is a fair representation of average. Right, the middle value. Now, somebody else could look at this and say one, but for a different reason. I think it's kind of obvious when you look at the graph. So if you want to say, hey, what's the average point tile? Oh, one, <laughs> right? Because it's the tallest. I mean, it's the most likely. When you reach in to your bag, or we always flipped them upside down in the box, right? There's more one tiles than anything else. It's, and it's honestly not even close. Right? It's almost six times as much as its next competitor at four. So there's more one tiles by far than any other number. All right. And the answer to this question should let you know that you're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> All right. So, so this particular answer lets you know you're not in algebra class. So in algebra class, it's always, you know, one because of this one reason and that's it. Right, But in statistics class, you can make two different arguments, and both can be correct. So if you make this argument, this is a median argument. right? You're really arguing it's because it's the median, and that's skewed. right? And this is a mode argument. And they're both fine. right? You can have different reasons for it. As long as they're justifiable, then you're good. Right? which makes statistics a little bit squishy, right, as a, as a course, right, which is one of the reasons um, algebra teachers don't like teaching statistics, right, because they don't like that they're, what do you mean there could be two completely valid reasons for why this is, right? In algebra, that's, that's not how algebra works, right? There's not two reasons for things. There's one reason and that's it, right? Now, the one thing you shouldn't say is the 1.87. 1.87 is wrong, right? Even though we're used to thinking average is the mean, the mean is not a good representation of average for this data set. So we would not want to use that because the data were skewed. And we learned in section six or section 3.1 that when data sets are skewed, the mean is not a fair representation of the middle. <laughs>